Hello there, we've got a new face in front of the camera this time instead of behind, uh, Stephen. Hello. Yeah, Stephen, why don't you introduce yourself? All right, yeah, I'm Stephen. Uh, I've been at the company for uh, about a year and a half now. Um, and last year I was doing a lot of uh, engineering, hardware, um, and now I'm Quinley lead. So I'm just uh, making yeah. sure that we sort everything out for the Quinley kits and uh, get them all to you. And yeah. Everyone knows Matteo already, so yeah, he doesn't need much of an introduction. People are sick of me already. And then behind the camera, we've got uh, Dominic, um, who's also been with us for a while. Hello. I don't know how well you guys can hear me, but I've also been at 3DQ since the fall. I've uh, been working uh, in a bunch of different areas, uh, a lot involved with the live streams lately. Yeah. Um, today we'll be talking about, we've sort of distilled the top 10 things that uh, we learned from running uh, an automated print farm. So it's not uh, often that people are running 50 under threes in house. I think what you guys will find interesting is um, running an automated print farm is actually quite different from running a traditional print farm. So oh, yeah. it, it was, there was a lot of trial and error and there still is a lot of trial and error involved in figuring out the best way to run things. But um, yeah, like we were the first people to do something like this with like an automated farm full of vendors. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of figuring things out for the first time. Definitely. You know. And so hopefully we'll uh, over the next hour and a bit, uh, we'll pass down all that wisdom to you guys. For those of you, since I know just talking with everyone, um, many of our customers pretty quickly after getting their first Quinley kit realized, oh, I have so much free time when I get another <laughs> printer. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so people have, uh, with the kit have slowly been building up their printers. So yeah, we just wanted to basically have a nice chat about like, here's a year's worth of trial and error that we've done and, and all the stuff we've learned and, and pass it on to you so that you guys don't have to uh, experience the same thing we did. Yeah. <laughs> Number one was optimize things on one printer first before copying it to the rest of the printers in your farm. Um, this will make sure that any sort of problems with your components are identified um, very early on and you come up with a solution that so that those problems do not plague the rest of your print farm, especially when making changes. So the next point is invest in reliability and time savings. So that means Sometimes it might cost a little bit more money to get a high quality part, but that will actually save you so much time and hassle throughout and the cost. lifetime and cost. Yeah. Um, something that doesn't need to be replaced as often saves you much more time than just the replacement cost. Mm -hmm. Number three, get involved in the community. A lot of people are already in communities for regular printing. Um, the community, is an amazing resource because all these crazy people who bought into 3D printing <laughs> very early on um, have spent a lot of time making their printers work very well, some to the point of obsession. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. like, it, it's true and, and learn from them. And, and I should mention, we do have a Discord full of people who are running Quinleys and who are getting them either set up for their first time or getting them set up on additional printers now. Um, and that is a really useful resource. Right, so uh, next fourth point is uh, to con consider climate control. That's alliteration. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in general, the environment that you keep the printers in is quite important. And 3D printing reliably means you need a very consistent uh, environment. So you need the good temperatures and you don't want drafts you don't want random times throughout the day where you're getting you know different changes in temperature um, and just in general just having a consistent nice enclosed area that doesn't heat up or cool down it's very nice and i should mention um it doesn't have to be very strict like in our case when we were sharing our warehouse experience it was varying like 10 degrees or 15 degrees throughout a day. Yeah, it was extreme. Yeah, it was And it had extreme. dust raining down <laughs> yeah. all day. So don't do that. Yeah. But always think about your environment is just as important as your print settings. Um, number five, keep things organized. So it's very, very important to track things because 
um, you will run into issues and things that are unique to your particular situation. And over time, you want to build um, some sort of catalog or database of issues that you've experienced so that you don't have to troubleshoot things um, over and over again. And this becomes extra important when working in a group because everyone else um, who's working with you on your print farm needs to be on the same page about that. So making sure to track failures, causes of failures, what printers are up, what printers are down, is, is very, very important. Um, otherwise, you're basically starting from scratch every single time something goes wrong. And things will go wrong. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> from first hand. We've learned that. <laughs> point 11. Yeah. yeah, so sixth point is to consider redesigning parts. And this is to make the model itself optimized for 3D printing. Um, and so we found that a lot of the parts that, you know, if they haven't really been designed with 3D printing in mind, they won't be as good as they could be, or they'll just print out so slowly that um, it just makes it efficient for us to spend an hour to redesign the part using nice round numbers in, in the line width and layer height, just so that it prints out without extra movements. Mm -hmm. That just saves so much time. Yeah. After you've redesigned your parts, point seven, optimize your slicing, spend some time, um, or rather invest some time in uh, getting those print times down um, and making sure that your settings are tailored to your model. I'd always say work from a base profile, but it does maybe taking the extra five or 10 minutes to um, optimize for your particular model is always worth it because if you save, even just taking 10 minutes to save 20 minutes of print time on a part, you've already paid yourself off in, in, in a single print, but now consider with automation, again, you're now thinking in the context of hundreds or thousands of parts and every, every couple minutes you save could be hours or days worth of print time that you're now opening up. Next point is to avoid large batch prints. And we find that having a lot of parts on a plate can cause, well, it can increase the likelihood of a defect coming up, ruining the batch. Um, and even just having so many parts on a plate that in just full, involves so many travel moves, so many retractions, and so many sort of small little inconsistencies that can add up and overall reduce the quality of your prints. And um, as well, doing these batch prints, it takes a lot of effort to slice, uh, to lay them out in an efficient way. And um, just having to use a general profile that kind of works with everything, it really uh, kind of limits what you can do with 3D printing. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine is, is switch to a larger nozzle. Even going up to a 0 0.6 from a 0 0.4 will save you a lot of time, but we recommend 0 0.8. Um, if you're doing for most parts, uh, not in the case of like highly detailed and highly aesthetic parts, but um, for most general use, 0.8 can be really good. And just think about, yeah, most models don't have any features that are smaller than 0.8 millimeters that a 0.8 nozzle can't do. So that is one of the easiest ways to save time um, in general. Or consider a 0.8 line width if you don't want to switch the whole nozzle. Um, yeah, you'll save so much time. It's such an easy way to save time. And they also save on maintenance as well. Gotta love the large nozzles. Yeah. They're my favorite. Yeah. Actually kind of jealous you got to talk about them. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you get to talk about this one. Yeah, okay, well I can talk about ice cream stores. So, yeah. yeah, your print farm is not an ice cream store. Having just a few options of filament is gonna save you so much time. Um, just being able to know intimately how your one or two or three colors of filament print uh, will make slicing a whole lot easier. It'll make sourcing your filament a whole lot easier. Um, you'll be able to save money by buying it in bulk. And you might even make some friends with uh, suppliers because you'll be a valued customer since you buy so much. Yeah, yeah. 
So tell us, like, for those of you who have stuck around or who have watched bits and pieces of it so far, let us know, like, what tip you think you'll find most helpful. Uh, do you have already a print farm at home or are you considering now that you've got your one printer automated, are you considering uh, getting some more, uh, setting up like a fully fledged print farm? Use this stream kind of as a manual or use the recap um, as reference and just think about these things as you start adding more and more printers because um, these all these points do apply to regular print farms, but um, these are extra important um, when it comes to the context of automation because these working on these 10 points are what's going to get the most value out of your printers um, yeah when you set up your farm so if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel because we'll be doing a lot like all of our product announcements on our by live stream and just by me mentioning that that might be hinting at something um, coming up uh, the other thing is uh, if you like this video, it helps share these very valuable tips that we've spent over a year learning um, when setting up our 50 Ender 3 print farm. Um, so if you haven't already, please do that. Join the Discord. Yeah. Point three, you got to engage in the community. And I would it's a great highly community. suggest, even if you don't have a Quinley, just to see what people are doing with it and how people are using the automation is, is very, very interesting. Um, so I would definitely suggest joining the Discord uh, if you aren't in there already. Um, other than that, we'll see you next week at the same time. It's top secret still. Top secret. That's going to be an exciting one. Mateo spills his secrets. No, I'll spill stream. the secrets. The beans will be everywhere. <laughs> it's spilled. 3D beans. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop it here before it devolves any further. <laughs> but we are going to be doing a cool demo That's um, true. of the new product that involves 3D printing. And this That's is actually a product that, that has been very highly requested for a <laughs> long time. So it is actually an important product. Uh, okay, that's all. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.